in the last video, um, I discussed that I wanted to add some additional video for the biomedical model of health. Now that's been one of the most popular videos, so thank you for all the subscribers um, and likes and comments that that's generated and views as well. Um, one thing we didn't talk about in the biomedical model of health was the assumptions of the biomedical model. Now, just as a little recap, the biomedical model um, is the dominant Western model of health. So in the NHS, in the United Kingdom, um, in GP surgeries, it's the model of health that would be used by healthcare professionals. Um, and this model is individualistic. Um, I suggest if you want a full rundown of this model, you have a look at my previous biomedical model video. But essentially, it um, the, the practitioner or the clinician will ask the patient um, certain questions to try and get to the root cause of an illness. And along the way, they'll try and eliminate what is wrong with the patient and what the patient um, does not have. Um, and in the end, they'll have a few symptoms that will lead to a root cause. And then those symptoms can be treated. Okay, so the model rests on five assumptions. So the first being is that the mind and body are separate. Um, and this as it actually has a historical root, but we don't really have time to go into that in this video, but it's to do with um, dualism, okay? So that the mind and body are separate. Now this poses a problem if we're thinking about treating things like um, mental health disorders, okay? So the mind and body are separate, so um, this could be an issue when we're treating people because the it's less, um, maybe less humanistic, less less of a holistic view. The next assumption is that the body is like a machine. And as it is a machine, healthcare professionals are engineers that must fix the machine. So it assumes that there's there's always something that can be fixed and that we can we can treat and we can tweak in a way that allows um, the person to get better or you know fix the symptoms. The third assumption is that technology must play a key role. Now, this can be a benefit because, um, you know, technology, ECG, um, CT scans, technology has come a long way and this helps us with treatment and diagnosis, but also it can be a problem. Um, for example, um, you know, in childbirth, if we're relying on machinery to tell and technology to tell when a woman's in labour, you know, we're no longer relying on how that person feels um, or, you know, what their body's telling them. We're thinking about we're using the technology to maybe lead lead the way. Fourth assumption is the reductionist approach taken by the biomedical model. So this assumes that illness is largely caused by biological causes and it omits any social um, or psychosocial problems. And finally, the fifth assumption is the adaption of germ theory. So once we once we're able to um, have germ theory, we can assume that all illness is from a root cause um, and it's biological. But I mean, this is the case in a lot of instances, but illness can be um, caused by our social environment, our psychological well-being. Um, so to assume always that um, illness is caused by one root biological cause isn't always helpful. Um, I mean, this is a move forward because obviously prior to germ theory, we were thinking about miasma um, and, you know, disease traveling on the wind. So this was um, that shift that the biomedical model was part of where science was now becoming the answer. So that's a very brief rundown of the five assumptions of the biomedical model. Hopefully this adds on to that more extensive video that I did on the biomedical model. So please let me know um, what other videos you would like. Um, and if you'd like me to go into more detail about some of these sections, um, for example, the, the dualism or um, maybe what some of these assumptions may mean or examples. Um, so thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.